guys, I have a TV review for you this time around, and it is for the brand new HBO series, Perry Mason. Two things I have to say up top here with this one is that I'm coming at this new version of the show, never having seen or read the source material. Also, I'm reviewing season one of Perry Mason, having seen the whole thing, even though it's a show that's being released week to week. And I kind of hate saying that because it sounds like I'm being obnoxious and bragging, but I really only bring it up because where the season goes and the flow of it overall does play a pretty big part in whether I recommend you jump into it or not. So in this new Perry Mason, the title character is working as a PI and he winds up getting involved in one of the biggest cases in Los Angeles in the 1930s. And it involves a child who is abducted and ultimately killed. That right there is the inciting incident for season one of the show. But now I'm gonna take it character by character to reveal a little more about what's in play here. and also to roll through my thoughts on this pretty large ensemble of main characters here and why not start off with the title character matthew reese as perry mason i think i could probably watch matthew reese in just about anything and here in particular he really nails the balance between perry being a bit of a jerk but also always making sure you are rooting for him i just really dug how his battle with his own personal challenges and demons is so well woven into his mission to solve the case makes for a pretty complex character arc where Perry isn't just painted as a cookie cutter hero who saves the day when he solves everything, but rather his journey really well reflects the complications that can be involved in trying to do the right thing. And there are so many layers to that with Perry between his relationship with his family, also his colleagues, and on top of that, the corrupt system here that he's forced to work within. Now on to Tatiana Maslany, who was just the boost of energy the show needed when they introduced her character, Sister Alice. Really, I could watch an entire spin-off series just focusing on her character. Maslany is always naturally captivating, and when you have her playing a character who's delivering these downright electric sermons, she's kind of an unstoppable force who steals scenes left and right. And I also just really respect where Maslani and the writers took the character throughout the season. There was way more of an internal struggle than what I was initially expecting, and I thought it played really well, especially when you throw in Alice's relationship with her mother here, who's played by Lily Taylor, who, no surprise, is a standout in the show as well. And the same could be said for Gail Rankin, who plays Emily Dotson, the mother of this child who's killed and just I, whoa does that character experience an emotional roller coaster and Rankin really excels when it comes to capturing the complexity of Emily's situation which involves not only her emotional response to losing a child but also the emotion that comes with being put in a situation like this courtesy of a flawed system. Continuing, hello Dewey, down the line here we've got Juliet Rylance who just had me hanging on her every word as Della Street. She works as an assistant to John Lithgow's lawyer character E.B. Jonathan, but it is just so abundantly clear that Della is just as capable, if not more so, than E.B. and all the other male lawyers working this case. Even though we do get about eight hours of content with this first season of Perry Mason, I just can't help but to think how characters like Della and also Chris Chalk as Paul Drake. He's a black police officer who gets caught up in this case. And Shay Wingham as Pete Strickland too, Perry Mason's right-hand man in a sense. They're all supporting characters who seem to me like they could easily carry their own series. I also can't not mention Stephen Root here, who was just perfectly cast as the DA working this case. Clearly, Perry Mason covers a lot of ground in season one, and because of it, some story beats can feel, I guess, kind of rushed. And I did often find, especially at the very beginning of the season, that I was playing catch up a lot. There are a ton of names in the mix, and when you're learning about them by watching quick talking PIs, it can kind of feel like you're being shown and told the information at first and not really engaging with discovering any of it. But that's where these great performances do come in handy quite a bit. 
all of the characters I've named here, and even a few others, feel so full. And that sparks real investment in this case and also investment in their intense personal stakes in it and also issues that make them more than just their work as well. I'm going to give Perry Mason Season 1 four Deweys out of five on the Dewey Decimovie scale. But again, do keep in mind that's a full season score right there. I had a little bit of a tough time getting into it at the very beginning. A hard time keeping up with the names and the details. The pacing was a little slow to start, and it did take a while for the characters to grow on me. But the thing is, they got there. And in the end, I was mighty satisfied with the answers I got, the questions I was still left with, and also how they teed up a potential second season. So ultimately, I'm recommending it. So there are my thoughts on Perry Mason. If and when you watch the show, and especially that first episode, do come back to this channel that night and let me know what you think of it. Before I say goodbye to you guys right now, I've got a big Patreon shout out going to Luke who is responsible for bringing you this review right now, Luke. You know your nonstop support just means the world to me. So yet again, thank you so much for being here and being part of the Patreon community. Big thanks to everyone out there watching this review. Do not leave it without liking and sharing it, and I'll see you soon with more movie and TV coverage.